After seemingly years of being nothing more than a carcass picked over by greedy vultures and outside forces, the Pac-12 conference finally added schools poaching four programs from the Mountain West in what can only be described as a total dick move. That is what makes all of the movement and speculation out here in college football's last frontier so confusing, perhaps even disheartening. It just feels like we are repeating the same mistakes of the past. In recent times, the Big West begat the WAC. The WAC begat the Mountain West. Now, the Mountain West begat the revamped Pac-12. It's college football's equivalent to Genesis 4.18. Unlike those biblical days in Genesis where everyone was living like 100 years, things as it relates to Western college football don't have nearly the longevity. So where the hell are we going here? That's actually probably not the ideal word choice after mentioning Erod, Enos, and the like. What the heck is happening with college football and the West, and what is next? Honestly, I feel extraordinarily conflicted about what's happening. After the initial excitement of the Pac-12 finally doing something and other wacky rumors wore off, there was this stark realization that things may not be improving. That was made all the more obvious after spending my weekend up in the elevation watching Wyoming and the University of Northern Colorado play, Vamos Osos. Everyone is in this mad dash scramble for survival, with Washington State and Oregon State lording over the entire situation. Seriously, it just feels like George Costanza's plan for being a philanthropist is playing out right now. I would have all this money and, and people would love me. Then they would come to me and beg. As schools from Sacramento State to Memphis now participate in a rat race style competition for a mythical invite to the new Pac-12, you have to ask yourself, is this any better than what those other schools did to Wazoo and OSU in the first place? And will the living members of Smash Mouth reunite for a concert when those final bids are handed out? Terrible movie ending, but moving on. I'm not saying the Pac-12 shouldn't have added those Mountain West schools, but it was done in a very dubious way that has now left the MWC scrambling itself. Not that this is all of that surprising. Schools have constantly done some really shady things as it relates to conferences in the Pacific and Mountain time zones. Are you telling me that the two conferences couldn't have worked together to formulate a strategy that allowed both to emerge on solid footing? Certainly, the Conference of Champions could have gone about this in a way that would have made sure the region had stability. So nothing like what happened to the Pac-12 collapsing and before that the WAC and Big West collapsing would happen to the Mountain West in the aftermath of the Pac-12 taking those four schools. If that wasn't bad enough, it feels like the new Pac-12 is simply going to make the same mistakes of the past to ensure its short-term survival. Unironically, they are going about business in a way that both those running the conference have complained about in the past, and now we know that is bad for the sport overall. With six schools in tow, the Pac-8 is now eyeing athletic programs from other conferences in far-flung parts of the country. Memphis and Tulane are both hot names. Some Texas schools will likely be part of an expansion as well because that's just how it goes. For anyone out there saying Cal and Stanford would be willing to go back to this newfound Pac-12 or 10 or 8 or whatever it ends up being, well, good luck with that. These are schools who didn't want to be in the same conference with Texas and Oklahoma. There is no way in hell they want their brands rubbing shoulders with Fresno State and Boise State. I'm inclined to think... The Cardinal and Golden Bears would play for zero TV revenue in the Big Ten or simply go independent and just play each other a bunch of times every year. Putting that hubris off to the side, Washington State and Oregon State have said on countless occasions that playing in a conference with teams spread out across the country that have little to no tradition is stupid. And it is stupid. It is so stupid. Yet Wazoo and the Beavers are doing the same thing. How does that work? work. Worse yet, they are doing this. They are executing this plan by raiding other conferences and leaving them with a similar scenario in which they just found themselves in. The bullied becomes the bully. It's not a good look. That brings me back to Laramie, Wyoming. I understand why the rebuilding Pac-12 may not want the Cowboys in their conference. It's a cool place. They left the arena auditorium open on football game day, meaning I got to walk on the court. But maybe Wyoming isn't a perfect fit in a re-envisioned Pac-12. I get it. Same goes for Nevada, San Jose State, other schools that I have an affinity for as a 
born and bred West Coast college football fan. I'm not going to say all of those schools need to be in a newfangled Pac-12, but the newfangled Pac-12 does need to realize the situation. Like it or not, every time a conference has tried to focus on the conference itself and not the bigger picture that is college football in the West, well, things have just eventually imploded. However, those at Oregon State and Washington State should have some duty of care here not to leave these schools like Wyoming, like Nevada, like San Jose State, like New Mexico, etc. They shouldn't be left high and dry. Not just because that is what happened to the Cougars and Beavers, but also because the West needs FBS to be strong here. We need a presence. We need unity. It needs a diverse range of programs for a myriad of other reasons. Even if Wyoming isn't in your conference, having them around is good for the sport as a whole. That is obvious to just about everyone apart from those running the Pac-12 these days who don't think like that at all. Instead of not committing the same mistakes of the past, they are diving headfirst into the madness. Geographically confusing conference that makes no sense? Check. Making other schools parade in front of you like a beauty pageant contestant? Double check. Screwing other schools and conferences? Triple check. Despite wild speculation, the end game here looks decidedly clear and not all of that exciting when the dust finally settles. As mentioned earlier, the Pac-12 will most likely pick up four schools, maybe as much as six, from far-flung parts of America. The Mountain West will backfill their losses with some of the old WAC programs, UTEP, New Mexico State, Rice, and possibly Louisiana Tech. I mean, these are all super obvious. Interestingly, there have been rumblings about Sacramento State and UC Davis eyeing a move up from FCS to FBS. The Hornets have gone as far to state their desire to get into the Pac-12, which I mean, if we're just saying things out loud, we would like to happen. I have a desire to be the starting goalkeeper for Palermo. In other words, neither are happening. The Mountain West would be an interesting fit. The Sacramento TV market gets mentioned as a major reason why Sac State and UC Davis would be attractive to the conference. That also does totally ignore the fact no one in Sacramento is all of that interested in Sac State athletics or UC Davis athletics. And as far as the Hornets go, well, they have below average FCS facilities that need to be fixed. UC Davis does make a little more sense since UC Davis Health Stadium where the football team plays can be expanded and the other athletic facilities are better than what's on offer at Sacramento State. Then again, getting three people in Davis to agree on anything is like pulling teeth. There are still folks who would rather the Aggies go back to Division 2 than move up to FBS. Really though, when I look at the situation without some huge donors coming out of the woodwork and funding this move, I just don't see it happening for UC Davis. Worse yet though, is that it would likely be an either or scenario. It's either going to be Sac State that gets picked or UC Davis that gets picked because the Mountain West would not want both schools, the same media market, in their conference. I think that's a bit asinine. Like, I think these are two schools that should be connected. You have a great local rivalry, but of course the finances, the money, the logic, none of that stuff works like that. Outside of the participants of the Causeway Classic, just about everyone wants to play fantasy booking with the other big sky schools as well as the Dakota 4 moving up. America is desperate to see Montana, Montana State, North Dakota, NDSU, and the two South Dakota programs go to FBS. It would be cool, no doubt, but there is a lot of risk for them involved. The entire economic model for these football programs is based on being successful, selling tickets and sponsorships to the local community. That is a hell of a lot harder to do if your football team is losing. There would be a runway for sure, but after five to eight years, those schools would need to be winning again at FBS to keep things afloat, and you cannot guarantee that. Even then, is a successful FBS program at either of the Montana or Dakota schools worth giving up what they have established at the FCS level? I just don't know that it is, and I think they'll probably stay the course. Outside of that, you do have the other stragglers. As an Idaho alum, I've heard nothing about the school even entertaining the idea of giving FBS another shot, and the Vandals will probably tie themselves to the Montana schools. Even if we wanted to move up, our athletic director is wildly incompetent and fears making any decision, let alone a big one. This would need to be something pushed by the president. And again, I have no inside information. I've heard nothing even remotely close to the idea that the Idaho president eyes FBS in the future. 
Eastern Washington, meanwhile, has punched above its weight for a long time now. But that school has so much debt that taking on more to move up is seemingly a non-starter. Utah Tech envisions themselves as being an FBS football program one day, but the school probably needs a little more time given what Zion Stadium is today and just other things that program needs to build. They've had a pretty rapid rise, and this is just maybe not the time for them. Personally, and I know a lot of people will disagree with this, I still think Grand Canyon could be talked into starting a football program given just how much the school spends on marketing every year. At some point, having a college football FBS team would be more effective than spending millions of dollars on television commercials each fall. Beyond that, though, there really just isn't much left out west. Let's just call a spade a spade. It is unlikely more than one or two schools will move up to FBS in this round of realignment. There's also a very real possibility none make the move, and we end up with a very uninspiring Pac-12 and Mountain West Conference. In order to get there, you had to create a bunch of unwanted animosity and act in the most hypocritical manner possible. I should be surprised or angry or annoyed by all of this, yet I'm sort of numb. This is college football, the sport where what's logical or what's best for the game is thrown out the window in favor of people enriching themselves. But hey, who needs tradition and pageantry and all that stuff that made college football great in the first place when a fired head coach is making tens of millions of dollars sitting at home? Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to know more about the rise and fall of Big West football, check out the video in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. More college football content can be found in the lower right-hand corner. Until next time, I'm Shine Hollis. This is The Touchback, and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.